Hello. We are back, and I don't see any words. I only see the Holy Incarnation. Yeah, I wanted to start right there. Oh, okay. Um, we are today going to do another book club reading, Be Holy for I Am Holy. Is the name of our group. Yes, it's the name of our book club. And we went to the movies yesterday, so that's why you see St. Joseph standing here. Because it just fall, fell into place so wonderfully. A uh, hand kind of planned, it, planned this yesterday. That's well, how we did too. Um, which is amazing because I think it was we're going to be reading a little bit about St. Joseph today. I think it was synchronicity. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's the Holy Spirit always right. working. Right. Even when we don't see it, he's always working. That's right. So um, today we're going to be reading The Most Holy Incarnation. Yeah. Mary espoused to St. Joseph. Joseph was the third of six brothers. His parents dwelt in a large mansion outside of Bethlehem. It was the ancient birthplace of David, but in Joseph's time, only the principal's walls were in existence. His father's name was Jacob. In front of the house was a large courtyard or garden. In it was a stone spring house built over a spring whose waters gushed forth out of faucets, each of which represented some animal's head. The garden was enclosed by walls and surrounded by covered walks of trees and shrubbery. Wow. The lower story, the lower story of the dwelling had a door but no windows. In the upper story there were circular openings over which ran around the whole top of the house, a broad gallery gallery with four little pavilions capped by cupolas. From these cupolas, a view far into the surrounding country was afforded. David's palace in Jerusalem was provided with similar towers and cupolas. It was out of one of them that he saw Bathsheba above the center of the flat roof arose another smaller story, likewise crowned by a tower and cupola. Joseph and his brothers occupied that last story with an aged Jew, their preceptor. The later occupied the highest room in the story, while the brothers slept in one chamber, their sleeping places separated from one another by mats, which in the daytime were rolled up against the walls. I have seen them playing up there each in his own separate space. They had toys shaped like animals, little, like little pig, pugs, like little pugs. Mm -hmm. Their preceptor gave them all sorts of strange instructions, and I could not understand. He laid sticks on the ground in various figures and stood the boys in them. The later steps into other figures which they had formed by rearranging the sticks. They laid sticks also in various positions as if for measurement. I saw too the father and mother of the boys. They did not appear to trouble themselves, but about their children, much about their children, but they paid very little attention to them. They, the parents, appeared to me to be neither good nor bad. Joseph was perhaps eight years old. He was very different from his brothers, very talented, and he learned quickly, but he was simple in his taste, gentle, pious, and unambitious. The other boys used to play him all kinds of tricks and knock him around at will. They had little enclosed gardens at whose entrance there stood on pillars covered images like swaddle infants. 
I often saw similar figures on the curtains of oratories, those of Anne and Blessed Virgin, for instance. The only difference was that Mary's picture held in its arms a chalice above which something arose. In Joseph's paternal home, these images were like swathed infants with round faces environed by rays of light. There were many such pictures in Jerusalem, especially in the older times, and also among the decorations of the temple. I have seen them in Egypt also, and among the idols that Rachel purloined from her father were similar figures, though smaller. Many of the Jews had swathed puppets like them, lying in little chests and baskets. They were intended to represent the child Moses in his little basket, and the swathing signified the binding power of the law. When gazing at these figures, I used to think the Jews honored the little image of the child Moses, but we have the image of the child Jesus. Wow. In the boys' little gardens grew bushes, small trees, and plants. I saw that his brothers often slyly trod down and tore up the plants in Joseph's little garden. Oh always treated him roughly, but he bore all patiently. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, when kneeling in prayer in the colonnade that ran around the courtyard, his face turned to the wall. His brothers would push him over. Mm -hmm. Once I saw one of them, when Joseph was thus praying, kick him in the back, but Joseph appeared not to notice it. The other repeated his blow until at last Joseph fell to the ground when I saw that he had been absorbed in God. But he did not revenge himself. He merely turned away quietly and sought another secluded spot. Outside the adjoining, outside and adjoining the garden wall were some small low dwellings. In them dwelt two elderly veiled females as if uh, as is often the case near the schools, they were servants. I saw them carrying water into the house. The domestic arrangements were similar to those of Joachim and Aunt's house. The beds rolled up and wicker parted partitions before them. I often saw Joseph's brothers talking with the servants, the servant maids and helping them in their work. But Joseph never interchanged words with them. He was always very reserved. I think there were also some daughters in the family. Joseph's parents were not well satisfied with him. They would have wished him on account of his talents to fit himself for a position in the world, but he was too unworldly for such aim. He had no desire whatever to shine. He may have been about 12 years old when I often saw him beyond Bethlehem, opposite the crib cave, praying with some very pious old Jewish women. They had an ordinary hidden in a vault. I do not know whether these women were relatives of Joseph or not. I think that they were connected with Anne, Joseph often went to them in his troubles and shared their devotions. Sometimes he dwelt in their neighborhood with a master carpenter to whom he lent a helping hand. The carpenter taught him his trade and Joseph found his geometry of use. The, 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 hostility, <clears throat> the hostility of his brothers at last went so far that when 18, Joseph fled from his father's house by night. A friend who lived outside of Bethlehem had brought him clothes in which to make his escape. I saw him in Lebona carrying on carpentry. He worked for, 
his living in a very poor family. The man supported himself by making such rough wicker partitions as those Joseph knew how to put together. The later humbly assisted the family as far as he could. I saw him gathering wood and carrying it to the house. His parents in the meantime believed that he had been kidnapped, but his brothers discovered him and then he was again prosecuted. Joseph, however, would not leave the poor people nor desist from the humble occupation of which his family was ashamed. I saw him afterward in another place, Nash. There he did better work for a well-to-do family. Though a small place, it had a synagogue. Joseph lived very piously and humbly, loved and esteemed by all. At last he worked for a man in Tiberias, at which people he lived alone near the water. Joseph's parents were long since dead and his brothers scattered. Only two of them still dwelt in Bethlehem. The paternal mansion has passed into other hands and the whole family had rapidly declined. Joseph was deeply pious. He prayed much for the coming of the Messiah. I noticed, too, his great reserve in the presence of females. Shortly before his call to Jerusalem for his espousal with Mary, he entertained the idea of fitting up a more secluded oratory in his dwelling. But an angel appeared to him in prayer and told him not to do it that as in ancient times, the patriarch Joseph became by God's appointment, the administrator of the Egyptian granaries. So now to him was the granary of redemption to be wedded. In his humility, Joseph could not comprehend the meaning of this. And so he betook himself to prayer. At last, he was summoned to Jerusalem to be a spouse to Blessed Virgin. Ken? Excuse me. There were seven other virgins who were with Mary to be dismissed from the temple and given in marriage. On this account, St. Anne went to Jerusalem to be with Mary, who grieved at the thought of leaving the temple. But she was told she must be married. I saw one of the distinguished old priests who was no longer able to walk born into the Holy of Holies. An incense offering was enkindled. The priest prayed sitting before a roll of writings and in vision, his hand was placed upon that verse in the prophet Isaiah 11, 1 in which it was written that there shall come forth a rod out of the root of Jesse and a flower shall rise up out of his root. Thereupon I saw that all the unmarried men in the country of the house of David were summoned to the temple. Many of them made their appearance in holiday attire and Mary was conducted to their presence. I saw one among them, a very pious youth, from the region of Bethlehem, who had always ardently prayed to be allowed to minister to the advent of the Messiah. Great was his desire to wed Mary, but Mary wept. She wished not to take a husband. Then the high priest gave to each of the suitors a branch, which was to be held in the hand during the offering of prayer and sacrifice. After that, all the branches were laid in the Holy of Holies with the understanding that he whose branch should blossom was to be Mary's husband. Wow. Now, when that youth who so ardently desired to wed Mary found that this branch, along with all the others, had failed to blossom, he retired to a hall outside the temple and with arms raised, raised to God, wept bitterly the other suitors left the temple and that youth hurried to mount carmel where since the days of elias hermits had dwelt he took upon his abode on the mount 
and there he spent his days in prayer for the coming of the Messiah. I saw the priests after this hunting through different roles of writing in their search for another descendant of the house of David, one that had not presented himself among the suitors for Mary's hand. And there they found that among the six brothers of Bethlehem, one was unknown and ignored. They sought him out and soon discovered Joseph's retreat, six miles from Jerusalem near Samaria. It was a small place on a little river. There, Joseph dwelt in a humble house near the water and carried on the trade of a carpenter under another master. He was told to go up to the temple. He went accordingly arrayed in his best. A branch was given him. As he was about to lay it upon the altar, it blossomed on top with a white flower like the lily. Oh, wow. At the same time, I saw a light like the Holy Spirit hovering over him. He was then led to Mary, who was in her chamber, and she accepted him as her spouse. The espousals took place, I think, upon our 23rd of January. They were celebrated in Jerusalem on Mount Zion in a house often used for such feasts. The seven virgins that were to leave the temple with Mary had already departed. They were recalled to accompany Mary on her festal journey to Nazareth, where Anne had already prepared her little home. The mar God bless you. The marriage feast lasted seven or eight days. The women and the virgins, companions of Mary in the temple, were present. Also many relatives of Joachim and Anne, and two daughters from Go Gofa, Gofna. Many lambs were slaughtered and offered in sacrifice. I have had a clear vision of Mary in her bridal dress. She wore a colored woolen underdress without sleeves. Her arms enriched, encircled by white woolen fillets on the breast and as high as the neck lay a white collar ornamented with jewels, pearls, etc. Then came a kind of gown open in front, wide like a mantle from the top to bottom, and with flowing sleeves. This gown was blue, embroidered with large red, white, and yellow roses and green leaves, something like the ancient vestments worn at Mass. It fastened around the neck on the white collar, and the lower border was edged with fringes and tassels. Over this was a kind of scapular of white and gold flowered silk set over the breast with pearls and shining stones. It lay upon the front opening of the dress and reached to the edge of the same. It was about one half and all an L wide and was fringed with tassels and balls. A corresponding strip hung down the back while shorter and narrower ones fell over the shoulders and arms. These lappets were caught under the arm from front to back with gold cords or delicate chains with which the broad upper piece of the bodice was fastened as also the breast piece that was placed over the upper body. By this arrangement, the flowered stuff of the dress was puffed out between the cords. The wide sleeves were tightly fastened in the middle of the upper and lower arm by buckles, puffing in, puffing out around the shoulders, the elbows, and the wrists. Over this costume fell along a sky blue mantle, it was flat, fastened at the neck by an ornament, and over it was a white ruffle, seemingly of feathers or silk dots. 
the mantle fell back from the shoulders, forming a large fold on the sides and hung behind in a pointed train. It was embroidered around the edges in flowers of gold. Mary's hair was arranged with such skill as is difficult to describe. It was parted on the top of the head and divided into numerous fine strands, which were caught together with pearls and white silk. It formed a large net that fell over the shoulders and down the back to the middle of the mantle. It looked like a web. The ends of the hair were rolled in and the whole net edged with fringe and pearls. On her head was placed first a wreath of white raw silk or wool, closing on top with three bands of the same kneading in a tuft. On this rested a crown about a breadth of one's hand set with many colored jewels. Three pieces arose from the circlet and met together in the center where they were surmounted by a ball. In her left hand, Mary carried a little garland of red and white roses made of silk, and in the right, a beautiful candlestick covered with gold. It had no foot, but was furnished like a scepter with knobs above and below the point which it was to be grasped by the hand. The stem began to swell out in the middle and ended in a little dish upon which burned a white flame. On her feet, she wore heavy sandals about two fingers in thickness under which before and behind was a support like a heel. They were green and gave the foot the appearance of standing upon sods. Two straps, white and gold, went over the foot and held them in their place. The virgin at the temple arranged Mary's skillfully woven hairnet. I saw them thus engaged. There were many busied with it, and the work went more swiftly than one could imagine. Anne brought all the beautiful clothes, but Mary was so modest that it was only with reluctance that she allowed herself to be arrayed in them. After the nuptial ceremony, her braided hair was wound around her head. A milk-white veil reaching up to the elbows thrown over her and the crown placed upon it. The Blessed Virgin had auburn hair, dark eyebrows, fine and arched, a very high forehead, large downcast eyes with long dark lashes, a straight nose delicate and rather long, a lovely mouth around which played a most noble expression and pointed chin. She was of medium height and she moved very gently and gravely looking very bashful in her rich attire. After the marriage feast, she wore another dress. It was striped and less magnificent than the one described. I have a scrap of it among my relics. This striped dress she wore at Cana and on, the, and on other holy occasions. She wore her wedding suit once again to the temple. The very wealthy among the Jews changed their dress three or four times during a marriage feast. Mary, in her magnificent apparel, presented an appearance somewhat similar to the richly adorned women of a much later period. The Empress Helena, for instance, and even Kaneg Gundulus, Kaneg Gun, Gundulus herself, the usual clothing of the Jewish women <clears throat> enveloped them closely, giving them an appearance of being wrapped up. But Mary's wedding dress was very different. It was something on the Roman style. Joseph wore a long white 
wide blue coat fastened from the breast down with loops and buttons. The wide sleeves were laced at the sides. A broad cuff turned up at the wrist. The inside provided, as it were, with pockets. Around the neck was something like a brown collar over which lay a kind of stole, and upon the breast hung two white bands. After the marriage, Joseph went to Bethlehem on some business and Mary, with 12 or 15 women and maidens, went to Anne's house near Nazareth. They made the journey on foot. When Joseph returned, I saw at Anne's house a feast at which, besides the usual household, were about six guests and several children present. Cups were on the table. The Blessed Virgin wore a mantle embroidered with red, white, and blue flowers. Her face was covered with a transparent veil over which was a black one. I afterwards saw Joseph and Mary in the house of Nazareth. Joseph had a separate apartment in the front of the house, a three-cornered chamber this side of the kitchen. Both Mary and Joseph were timid and reserved in each other's presence all. They were quiet, very quiet and prayerful. Once I saw Anne making preparations to go to Nazareth. Under her arm, she carried a bundle that contained some things for Mary. <laughs> to reach Nazareth, which lie in front of a hill, she had to go over a plain and through a grove. Mary wept very much when Anne was leaving and accompanied her a part of the way. Joseph was alone in his apartment in front of the house. Mary and Joseph had, properly speaking, no regular housekeeping affairs. They received from Anne all they needed. I saw Mary spinning and sewing too, but yet with wide stitches. The clothes then worn had not many seams and were entirely in strips. I saw her embroidering also and with her little white sticks knitting or working. The cooking she did was very simple and while it was going on, the bread was baking in the ashes. They used sheep's milk and meat, generally pigeons only. Wow. That was beautiful. We got to see a little bit of Joseph like me. Yes, I'm so excited. I know him better. I know. And last night we got to see all of the testimonies about him, which were beautiful. The movie we went to was not what we expected. You know, we thought it was going to be more, um, you know, acting and it was more documentary style, but it was beautiful. And and we got to know some of the amazing miracles attributed to Joseph. So it was beautiful. So Jeanette, what did you get? Um, I was so enthralled and I really liked the way this was written because it wasn't as hard to understand as the other ones, as the other readings. Right. Um, I have to say it's one of my favorites because it it, it really it really gave me a eyesight on Joseph and how he was and how he was always quiet and reserved and how he was very compassionate and, and he didn't want to get involved in anything that was like Conflict. bad or mean, the brothers, how they bought, bullied him, but yet he stood his ground. He didn't, he didn't participate. He just moved to the other side. It was well, just. I, I think men do a little bit of that. Like my boys and and the guys that they work with and stuff, they all rouse each other. So it's like more of a a masculine boy thing. And and he just he was not into. It depends. Comedy. You gotta have that character though, because um, if you don't have that kind of a character trait, yeah, and it because his because you're either. You're either a strong person or you're more of a reserved. You're either an extrovert, an introvert. There's different personality right. traits. Right. He was one to just 
he was ponder incredible. and contemplate. He was very artistic at a young age. Yeah. Later, he became a carpenter. He wasn't understood by his family. Um, well, and, I think they were more extroverted, as you said. Yeah, and they were very like materialistic too, because the mother and the parents wanted him to have a profession that was like a little bit bigger than what he just wanted to humbly live, and he enjoyed being an artist in the fact that of his carpentry, and he he liked to help, and so that was very. It, it was I really enjoyed that reading a lot. I had a couple of questions on the first part of it, a, a capula. I didn't know what that was, a flower, what was, but it's actually, I sent it to you. It's actually the top of like, cause they talked a lot about the capulas in David's time. He had the same thing when he was looking over to she, um, Bathsheba, you know, and all that. Right. So I was interested in knowing what a capula was and, um, what is it actually? You want to read what I say? So, uh, yeah. um, in architecture, cupola is a relatively small, most often dome-like tall structure on top of a building, often used to provide a lookout or to admit light and air. It usually crowns a larger roof or dome. Remember, they didn't have air conditioning. So I don't know, though, if you can see this now. You can't. Um, but it's like a tower kind of at the top of a building. So um, it's like a little roof and then windows. And it's it's jutting out of the top like a chimney almost, but, a, but wider. So Yeah, and actually people have it sometimes in their houses and they put like a, like a weather vane on the top of it and stuff. Right. And you can buy it at Home Depot. I saw there that they were like $600 at Home Depot. Yeah, so, like yeah, it, it draws it. air, it probably draws air in it and is sort of like an air conditioning type of thing in a home back then. It was, you know, they didn't have central air. <laughs> okay. So um, so I guess that's what it was about. Um, so what I liked was um not to be materialistic. But I loved the fact that, remember, they were the royal family and they they had a mansion. The parents had a mansion. So, um, oh, you mean his parents? Yeah, Joseph's parents had a mansion. It was a large mansion outside of Bethlehem, it says. So, um, oh, I didn't get that. I got it that they all lived. Like, because like now in the old countries and even in Argentina, everybody lives together in one house and you have different stories. So like uh, you have like a little bit of more privacy because you have your own story. And I think it's that way in India and uh, in a lot of other places too. Hold on, keep talking because I got to give my cat something real quick. Yeah, I think, um, I think that, you know, like, like I was raised in Argentina and we, that's why I'm, I'm always in the, in the mind of the whole family living together right. because I was raised that way. I was raised where we had like three stories and I had my aunt living in one. And then I had my, you know, my, my grandparents. And then on the bottom, it was like, it was like the whole family kind of like lived together. Right, like and the Chinese so, people do when they come exactly. to um they come to California and they a lot That's of them just common. Them. It's just yeah. common for everybody to live together and you help each other out. You know, the older my women family. help with the kids and and so forth. My uncle owned an apartment building and it was called um it was on Trailer Avenue in um in Ben Salem. And it was called, I forget the name. Um, I, I, I think we just called it Trailer Avenue. But it had about eight apartments. And we all lived in it. My uncle and his kids. My um, I aunt, love that. I love that. I was raised like that. It was awesome. I enjoyed that so much. Yeah. And then me and my mom and uh, my brother. And then um, 
and then there was a couple that rented and I think they had kids, but all of us kids would be in the hallways all day long and going outside. We, it, it, it was, it had a lot of ground around it yeah. and we would be outside playing and going in and out. Wasn't it cool? I really enjoyed that. That's why I got a big house and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to my son meeting someone and you know, having a family and thus living together. Cause I told him, I said, you know, the house is going to stay with you, but I need to, you know, I need to live here too, if you don't mind. Cause here it's kind of weird. It's weird. Like having your in-laws living with you and stuff, unless you're European, if you're European, well, I, they do that. I mean, I was, there's less ground there in Europe, you yeah, know, I used to clean houses um, mm -hmm. a while ago and all these awesome families they were from europe and they had like eight restrooms eight rooms and rooms giant mansions and they all oh, the whole family lived together it was it's so beautiful i love that well i enjoyed it but um eventually my grandmother oh and my grandmother and her husband who was my step grandfather lived there that's where i had that near what i believe was a near death experience because we had put a little pool outside it was about you know three four feet deep and that's where i i almost drowned but um we would play in, and we would, me and my cousin would pretend we, we would say we're in mommy's belly. It was a very nervous. Uh, yeah. That's what that's we cute. Yeah. Yeah. We were little, you know, we were like five or six years old. So it was really cute. And we enjoyed it so much being around all our cousins and stuff. It, it was so much fun. So um, it was mostly me and my one cousin, Steven, and the other ones were, uh, my aunt was a little more controlling with her kids, one of my aunts, and they eventually got a house too. My grandmom got a house or they got a house and then my grandmom got a house and everyone moved out and me and my mom and my brother were left there and there was no heat. I remember it was terrible, but, um, anyway, so, um, it was, uh, very, um, interesting. And like you said, it was common, but here they say that Joseph was third of six brothers. His parents dwelt in a large mansion outside of Bethlehem. So it was the ancient place of David. So I just found it. Oh, it says it was the ancient place of David? Because I yeah. thought it said it was like the one of David, but it was his ancient place? It says it, it was, was the ancient God. birthplace of David. And then it says... His father, the birthplace. It doesn't say it was the mansion of David's too. No, it says it was the ancient birthplace of David. Okay, David. yeah. But in Joseph's time, on the principal walls were in existence. His father's name was Jacob. I never knew that um, Joseph's father's name was Jacob, but it makes sense. It's a family name. And what I loved about it is it said in the front of the house was a large courtyard or garden. I thought that was beautiful. In it was a stone spring house built over a spring whose waters gushed forth out of faucets. Like I can see this kind of like a little bridge type thing. Um, and then each faucet represented some animal's head. And I thought of revelations, right? Yeah. Revelation. The garden was enclosed by walls and surrounded by covered walks, trees, and shrubbery. Like I just could, I, I lived in an apartment in South Florida and it was by the beach and it was enclosed with shrubbery and you had to go through an arch to get through, to get to the little apartment. And oh my gosh, I loved it so much. The, my daughter, I would, she was only about uh, four uh, her and another little girl, we would have little tea parties out front there with their little teddy bears and stuff. It was just so cute. I have a picture. Anyway, the lower story had had a door, but no windows. Well, you know, I wonder, you know, why they didn't have windows, but I, I it, it just was interesting to me why there would be no windows. Um, but the uh, my mother always always worried about windows for someone, you know, uh, robbing them or something but I don't think they thought like that back then. So, um, so I thought it was interesting in the top, there were circular openings. So I'm imagining that it's stone of some sort, you know, because remember 
Joseph was much more than a carpenter. He was like an all around. He did stonemason and and all of that from from what we understood from um I don't know if it was from the book, the consecration or what, but we understood that. So I just thought that was interesting. And then um over which ran a whole top of the house a broad gallery of four little pavilions capped by cupolas. So this is literally like a mansion. It says from these cupolas, a view far into the surrounding country was afforded. Almost like a castle with these cupolas that are these uh, roofed um, little tower type things. Almost like a, um, a castle, how they would have lookout places. So... And and then, and then they had walls around it for safety. So, you know, I... So he had like a nanny and the nanny's name was a different name I'm not familiar with. His, his what was it? Prejudice? It's something with a P. It said a preceptor. A, a preceptor. I've never I, heard of that. Well, your, your daughter, when she went to nursing, everyone gets a preceptor. And in fact, you talked about it in some of our texts. Oh yeah, now I remember. Okay. Yes, that is someone who is like a teacher. Oh, okay. That te that teaches you in the beginning of nursing, uh, you know, to get your footing on the floors because it's really scary at first. And so you have a preceptor and you have um uh certain tasks that need to be completed so that she knows that she taught you each thing and you have to sign off that she taught you this, okay. she taught you that. So it's very similar, it sounds like. Like it's sort of like a tutor, more more than a nanny, a tutor. So he had a private uh person to help him. Yeah, and it sounds like it was a common thing. Um, and then they talked about the brothers all slept together, which I thought was, you know, in, in the same area with little um things between them, which I thought was interesting. So that was all fun to learn about and then to hear about joseph at eight years old and different from his brother talented learned quickly but he was simple in his taste humble gentle pious and unambitious the other boys were like like you were saying more extroverted he was more introverted and they were like typical guys you know rousing each other i don't see them as you know fighting or you know the conflict is more like a play they were kicking him in the back while he was praying in the garden and he had a room. No, that's just Jeanette, being a little on the meaner side i think the way i see it but jeanette boys are a, are a little bit more um i have two i have two yeah. boys they're when, very different from each you other have four or five boys together they get rousy like so I don't see that as like mean. I see that as boys being boys, you know? So um, I thought it was uh, interesting the enclosed gardens and the pillars. Uh, like it just, it this the whole image, you know, was just beautiful. And they talked about the uh, curtains. They had the little, little, uh, look like little infants. I just, uh, you know, the embroidery, like hearing all of this, and I found it interesting how um, she describes the parents as not being good or bad. Yeah. Like being, I kind of pictured lukewarm. Well, they were, they <laughs> seem to be your typical royal family. You know, they were more, you know, they were just your typical, they were not your humble type. They lived in a big old mansion, you know, but they did have a lot of kids. But here... This is what I, I thought was interesting about Mary. It said the only difference was that Mary's picture held in it arms, in its arms, a chalice above which something arose. Right away made me think of the precious blood. In Joseph's parental home, these images were swathed infants with round faces environed by rays of light. Made me think of the monstrance. So it just was like, you know, these, 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 uh, themes that, you know, are replicated. It's just, so there were many pictures in Jerusalem, especially in the olden times among the decorations of the temple. So I just thought this was all so beautiful. And, and it said, 
Among the idols that Rachel purloined from her father were similar figures, though smaller. So they had little heirloom type figures, you know, like you were talking about how they carved them back then. Here they kept some of those. They had some of those from their previous family, you know, their, their ancestors. So many of the Jews had swath puppets like them lying in chests and baskets. So like maybe with for storytelling, you know, because back then storytelling, they didn't have entertainment like television. So they had these puppets maybe in these chests and baskets and they, you know, maybe they did shows for the kids. Who knows? And it said they were kind of like replicates of themselves. So I would think of also something like, you know, to represent because they didn't have photographs and stuff. Yeah. And it said they were intended to represent the yeah. child Moses in his little basket. Yeah. That's Those cool. were the figures that they had on their curtains. Those were the figures that they had carved and in their So they're like icons that we use now. Like I have yeah. Joseph here in front of me and I feel like he's with me, even though he's a picture. He's a, yeah. he's a, he's a four or five, 20 D picture here, whatever you call it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, and she said, uh, when gazing at these figures, she, she used to think the Jews honored the little image of the child Moses. But we have the image of the child Jesus. So look at that. Just beautiful. Just so beautiful. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed the reading. Today. Yeah. So in the boys' little gardens grew bushes and trees and plants. And just, and then his his brothers being a little mean, like you said, were in the little, they tore up his plants in his little gardens, little brats. Joseph's brothers were a little little buggers. Um, they all see. I had, but see, he this. needed all this. All this was needed for him for his future of what God had in mind for him. He needed not to have such an easy life like his brothers did. He right. needed a little bit of like a little prepping. So that's little trials that we have in our lives are sometimes needed for us to grow in our humility. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and in our character, in right. our personality. That's right. Our, your character is, is brought out by the circumstances in so your he life. He had little trials growing up with his, with his brother. So later on when he had him in real life with Mary and running here and there and doing everything he needed to do, he was able to deal with them in a, holy way yeah you know, when, when when there was no room and there were no yeah. ends and he humbly accepted what they offered without saying what you know yeah. uh yeah he didn't act in titles or anything no i i'm i'm a hundred percent sure that he must have felt a little like wow oh, you God. know you know a little a little bad about having to do this to his wife and having yeah. a child he must have felt a little like bad about it but, but yet he, he trusted exactly. in god yeah he just gave it to god so yes yeah when things happen that we are not expecting when i was younger i would freak out but as i got older i just said the holy spirit is in control and just accept whatever happens except which was very uh foreign to me when i was younger i was you know your typical entitled young person and very indignant. Um, and so as life goes on, you start to realize, no, it just doesn't work that way. And the, the conversion that you do, you learn to embrace your humility, which when, when unexpected things happen, you just accept them and, and trust in the Holy spirit, as you said. So I thought this was just, you know, um, here, the boys always treat him roughly, but he bore it all patiently and just accepted. And they talked about the kick in the back and those things. Um, but Joseph ignored it. So to the best of his ability, you know, and, and like they say, he turned the other cheek. Exactly. And it just was beautiful. It just, this was all just so beautiful. And the fact that he was so absorbed in God in his prayer was another beautiful 
And I really am trying in my prayer life because it's hard. You know, I, I put an alarm to do the um, St. Bridget. And now I think I'm putting it too late. I think I need to do it earlier in the day. It's just, it's, it's. Um, yeah. I yeah. Why don't you put it um, on YouTube while you're cooking your breakfast or you're making your dinner or, you know, while you're doing something so you can listen to it and pray with it while you're doing something you all you you always do so you do it without thinking whatever you're yeah, doing do that that way it'll keep me it works great for me yeah do you do you put yours on youtube i haven't seen it the same bridges is on youtube yeah oh 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 you mean just turn it on from the youtube exactly and I you listen you to it you don't have to sit there and read it just listen to it and if you're doing something you normally do, it's a routine and you do it without thinking. Like if I'm watering my plants or if I'm, you but know, folding me, laundry. For me to focus. With See, I can do it. I can do two, I three things at once. Rosary. I can do it with rosary, but I can't do it with that for some reason. Well, it's so, better than not doing it at all. <laughs> well, that, well, no, 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 no. I, I just, I just need to get myself to be absorbed in my prayer. And, but I did in the beginning, I started just repeating it, but I found I was not focusing and that's why I changed it to sitting. I, I actually put slides on my phone, like I did with the rosary, but the rosary, I'm always doing something when I'm doing my rosary during the day, because usually I have something I have to do now. Sometimes I was doing, I was being really good on the Stairmaster and I still have not got myself back to it but I'm trying to get myself to at least do 15 minutes. Well, I have to be always doing something with my hands for some reason. Yeah. I think it's my ADD or something. So yeah. like now we're talking and this whole hour or hour and a half that we're talking, I'm making rosaries. So I make like 10 rosaries while we talk. See, for me, I get distracted. That's why I have to be careful with that. But anyway, um, so everyone's different. You have to do it your way, but yeah. I'm going to continue to do my slides and I think I'm just moving it to the mornings now. I don't think I can wait until evenings because I get tired. Um, so, uh, um, so anything else come out at you? Well, I just, all of these descriptions of the, um, of, you know, they had servants and, um, and those kind of things um, just kind of jumped out at me. And then um, uh, the maid servants were helping the brothers, but Joseph never interchanged words with them. He was always very reserved. He didn't seem to, to uh, interact with those servants. He was a very focused kind of uh, introverted person who didn't, talk much at all even to the maid servants that were there to help him he seemed directed more by the holy spirit in my mind you know um well well did he, he it, it says there that he helped them well i didn't get to that part yet but um oh. he never it says he never interchanged words. you really go sentence for sentence don't you no, no, no. But because I don't want to miss it. It says yeah. Joseph never interchanged words with them. He was always very reserved. So I don't think, you know, that he was helping them from what I can see here, at least uh, word wise. Um, and then she goes on to say, I think there were some daughters in the family. So Joseph maybe had sisters from what it, you know, what it sounds like. So it says here that Joseph's parents were not satisfied with him. And I was like, wow, they wished for him on account of his talents to fit himself in the position of the world. They were more worldly, as you said. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, and he um, and then she jumps from eight to 12 years old when she saw him opposite the crib cave praying and pious old Jewish women, they had an oratory. I just thought this was all interesting talking about how, um, you know, all these people around them, you know, I just, I just thought it was beautiful. And, and then when they, um, th they talked about, um, his parents believed that he had been kidnapped. So there was crime. But his brothers discovered him. And I thought of Joseph 
you know, remember the brothers that threw him in the pit and took his coat because they were jealous of him? Oh my gosh, yeah, I didn't put that together, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, um, and then again, he was persecuted. Joseph, however, would not leave the poor people or desist from the humble occupation. So that's a parallel there too. Yeah. Like Old and New Testament. And he would not leave the poor people or desist from the humble occupation, which his family was ashamed. So he remained, um, you know, like you said, he remained humble. So then it says, I saw him afterward in Thanach, where he did better off with for a well-to-do family. So it seems like he moved away from the family he worked for a man in tiberius at which place he lived alone near the water so it seems well, you know he was getting older too when you get older in those times you got to have a little bit of money because you have to think of you know the person you're gonna no i no i think that he with. left his family home and became independent and went and got an apartment he was working for this man in tiberius i think he moved out of the family home he went and got his occupation and maybe he kind of shied away since maybe his parents were pressuring him and he needed to be alone. You know, I live alone and I need a lot of quiet, you know, oh, I, I need people. I need yeah. people. I talk a lot. And when I'm around people, I'm going to talk. Um, So the living alone, it forces me to have that quiet time. And I love when the kids don't call me and I'm just, you know, my kids call me every day. One of them I'm on the phone with at least an hour a day or my grandson. I have four of, you know, between the four of them, I'm on the phone with one of them each day. Some of them several times in the week, you know, so, um, and just blabbing, not, you know, not always anything, but in any case, so I think he just moved out and his brothers, his parents were long since dead. So that's why, like you just said, I don't know if maybe he was a little older. Um, he was older for, um, he was a little older, obviously, because his parents were long since dead. So I don't know, you know, when he moved out and all. It's kind of hard to. Oh, she didn't say anything about the age. I was hoping she would. I know. Well, she went from 12 years old to him out living on his own. And then the next paragraph is joseph's parents were long since dead and we'll see you don't hear anything yeah. about him marrying someone else before or anything exactly. so i like that <laughs> yeah and the whole family rapidly declined but joseph was deeply pious just praying and waiting for the messiah doing his work with his little workshop so i just I, I, and so he was building up a little you know nest egg for for him and his someday wife but it seems like him and mary both he and mary both were planning a life of virginity from what we understood prior so i don't know so then it says was the granary at reception to be wedded in his humility he could not comprehend the meaning of this and he betook himself to prayer he didn't know if he wanted to be married it sounds like and then at last he was summoned to Jerusalem to be a spouse to the Blessed Virgin. So maybe all that time he was building his nest egg, knowing he would eventually be called to be married. So, you know, families arranged marriages back then, but so did whole communities. Whole communities brought together like they did with Mary. And I thought that was interesting. There were seven other virgins with Mary um, to be dismissed from the temple. Remember, they were they were sent to the temple to learn. And then the community got together to send them out to marriage. So the temple seems to be a sort of training ground for marriage and um, and family life with children or whatever. Because they took care of smaller children that came into the temple that were like Mary, three years old. So the older ones, maybe it's a training ground for to learn to have families. You know, that's what I imagine in my mind. So here she's told they must, she must be married. She was not happy about that. And what did they do? The priest prayed, sitting the roll of writings, a vision in his hand was the verse in the prophet Isaiah, they're using the Bible as guidance to all of this. 
this is a very ritualistic type of thing in getting these girls and they take these rods um they're talking about the root of jesse he was told in isaiah the root of jesse would would flower and this is how they picked women remember they're waiting for the messiah so all of this ritual it, it is happening because one of these women is to produce the Messiah. And they know this. This is a very common knowledge among the Jews. So they're waiting for that. And so all of these men are together. They get all these men together and these young young youth. And they, and they, they take these little branches and they put them in waiting for the one which will, the one that will flower first will be the one that will be, be chosen for her husband. None of them flower. So what do they do? They call Joseph up and his branch is given. Little does he know the little white flower, the lily, boom, he's Mary's wife and she accepted him. This was a common ritual and she was expected to accept them. So the lily represents the, 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 you know, the staff that bloomed. I thought the lily represented innocence and that, you know, something they're else. Both virgins. They're both going to be virgins. Oh, yeah. But I thought, so the lily also represents that, the, the blooming staff. Right. Because you know the oh. picture of Joseph there with, with yeah. little baby Jesus? And what did we see in the movie last night? They kept yeah. showing us. And I kept thinking Aaron's rod. No, Joseph's staff. That's what that was. But it's it's the pattern of it's another parallel. Right. Aaron's rod. That's what I kept thinking of. So anyway, so here um they talk about the festival and you know getting ready, and then they start describing her, which was very hard to follow. This this outfit. I mean, we'd have to take one at a time, and we're not prepared to do all that. <laughs> no, please. Um <laughs> please. <laughs> So uh, it was very confusing anyway. I like the gold. You know me with gold. I love gold. So I love to hear about the gold on the. I loved her hair, the way they did her hair for her wedding. That was beautiful. Yeah. So, and it was embroidered. I love embroidery and I thought of your machine. So every time you're doing embroidery, Mary did embroidery, Jeanette, and you're doing embroidery. So it was embroidered oh. around the edge in flowers of gold. So next time you do something with flowers of gold, you can think of Mary. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, and then they talked about her hair and the fine strands. I thought that was interesting. You know, if you know anything about Jews, my daughter's a little Jew girl. Um, they have kind of kinky hair. She had, um, my daughter had ringlets and hers was, Mary's was supposedly gold. So she probably had, Little well, it, it um, said she was blonde growing up as a baby, but now it, her hair changed to auburn. And you know how oh, that right, happens. Right. It did say auburn. Yeah, you know how that happens. Like, yeah. you know, my daughter, Gabby, she was blonde, blonde, white, white, white. Really? And then when she grew up, now she has like a brown. She has a oh, chest wow. Brown See, color. I was platinum blonde and, and then I became dirty blonde. But so the, hair changes just like eyes change too. Yeah, exactly. Especially babies, the first six months are blue, and then after that they turn brown. My my I had two brown, I had Rick and Elizabeth are brown, and both of their fathers had brown, and Joe was blue like me, which I didn't think was possible because his father was brown. I, I did wasn't a nurse back then. Yeah, I, I have I have one green eyed like gray, yeah. and then I have three brown eyes like me. Yeah, yeah. So who 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 would have known? I thought the dominant was brown, but apparently that's not necessarily so. And Elizabeth hopes not because if her and Spencer marry, he's got like greenish and she's like hoping it's bluish and greenish. She just, she's so mad at me. I didn't give her blue eyes like I had control. But anyway, so <laughs> here, yeah. So here we are. The ends of the hair were rolled in, the whole net edged with fringe and pearls. So just imagining this was interesting and the, these outfits and um the 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 how they use flowers and then you know and then the 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 um the flames and things like that this was all very beautiful. yeah when i when when i read hair, when i read stuff like that i think of why those um you know the movies of the old days how they use these 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 people that had vision 
um, they use them to get the right, the real uh, outfits and everything just perfect, you know. And this is awesome because, yeah, if you follow this, if somebody like a costume designer follows this completely, they can totally duplicate Mary's wedding dress. Yeah. That's wow. just awesome. I love and, it. And here after the nuptial, her braided hair was round, wound around her head. Can you see Mary with her hair in braids around, around her? Yeah, and then it said that she didn't feel that great with all this commotion going on about her. She felt she like a little bit. Helpful. Yeah, she did. She, she was like, like okay, she didn't let's like just it. get it over with. Let's just do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then her her description of her hair was auburn, like you said, and dark eyebrows. So she lost her blonde, like your daughter. And then she had a very high forehead. You know, they say that's a sign of intelligence. So I don't know how true it is. But, um, and then large downcast eyes. And when you look at the picture that was done of her by Juan in Juan Diego, that's the look that she had. Juan Diego in Mexico, how they have her, that actual picture of Mary is just like this what she's describing here. So I thought that was so interesting. My girl. Hey girl, I'm um on my I'm taping Jeanette and I are taping our our um our morning thing. So I have to call you but actually can we pause a minute Jeanette? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You should have paused before you said all that. Sorry. I didn't think okay. about it. I'm not perfect. Okay, so yeah, I thought it was interesting how um, Mother Mary actually looked like Juan Diego, um, the the image of her. So with the with the dark hair, dark eyebrows, uh, law, uh, she had a high forehead in that, and um, and her eyes were downcast, almost like that that look of yeah. her eyes. Yeah, yeah, you said you said all this before. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm sorry, I'm repeating. Because, oh, it's okay. Because to me, it's very, um, it, it, it's, it confirms to me that, you know, you know how they, they're doing the Eucharistic miracles and, and all of the blood comes back as AB and traumatized cardiac tissue when it's a blind thing sent to all the DNA labs. Well, it confirms, and this literally confirms what she looked like. She had a long face, just like Christ in the real picture we have of him from the shroud is a long face. So um, so I thought that was interesting. And then here she says, he has a scrap of Mary's dress among her relics. I'm like, what? Um, she says, after the marriage feast, she wore another dress. It was striped and less magnificent than the one described. I have a scrap of it. So she has a scrap of Mary's dress, not the wedding dress, but another striped dress. And that then, she wore also to the wedding of Cana. She says, this striped dress she wore at Cana. Yeah. So, so she wore a striped dress to Cana. I mean... We know what Mary wore to Cana. I think that is so amazing. Yeah, Natalie wore a really cute striped dress yesterday too. I know. And yeah. she, did you hear what she said about the adornment on the neck? She said, well, I'm hanging around with Jeanette here and she makes me more fancy. <laughs> She's you so guys funny. are like sisters. You and her both Hispanic. And you both have, you know, uh, Hispanic, like the adornments and all that. Although I like gold, but I'm different than you guys. Yeah, we're both only child, too. Yeah, so children. you guys are like, you and her are like sisters. We were raised by adults. We have we have a dysfunctional family, both of us. She did her, she did your hair the other day. This is the second time. Oh, yeah, she did my hair yesterday. That's why it's black, yeah, guys. You guys are like sisters. So I tried I growing the grays. I really tried for like eight months and I just couldn't anymore. Oh, I was okay. getting so depressed. It's so okay. I said, no, I'm just going to do it. What Listen, my mother used to say gray hair goes out of control. It's very hard. That's it's not that. I just... Short. I'm just not ready yet. I'm just not okay. ready yet. 
that's okay, mama. You don't have to be, you know, it, you, you're saving money for your daughter's wedding right now. So you did it at home and it cost yeah, Natalie did it for me. It was very inexpensive versus $200. Quarter, they wanted to charge me a quarter, 25% less. And then Greg cut it. So, I mean, you had the whole deal. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, my daughter-in-law, I've been waiting. My hair's way too long. It's, I want my hair right here. She has been putting me off and, and I, I saw Paul Mitchell's school. I hate send her this her. video. Send her this video. She'll no, hear no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> she did look, she she has her own business now. She was a manager for years of uh great clips and she was a great manager. They they were upset when she left, but she has her own her own stylist um uh little little shop that she shares with three others. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, so she she makes her own time. She nobody tells her what to do anymore. Perfect. But she didn't like the whole mask thing, you know. So the pandemic, she said, guess what? I'm out of here. Because my son did not like that they he didn't like anyone bossing her around like that. So she got her own place. And so I tell her because she's in, in Orlando, they live further out by the coast. So I tell her to just when she's in Orlando, let me know and I can drive down there. I live about an hour from all, an hour to three hours from my daughter, which I kind of like it that way because I don't like, I like my alone time, you know? So anyway, so here we are talking about her, um, her, the, the feast and the wedding at Cana. I love how she brings it back. And then she describes her wedding dress was very different on the Roman style, which is what I imagine her in. I didn't think of her in Cana in like a striped dress. But this was more of a Roman style. And I, you know, and then when she described Joseph in wide blue coat with loops and buttons, like I was like, wow, trying to imagine Joseph, you know, in his little wedding outfit. So that was all really nice. Um, it just it was a beautiful reading. And then when she saw Mary spinning and sewing. I think of you, Jeanette, with your sewing and us doing our dolls, which we have to get back to our dolls. Yes, we do. We do. We do. Wow. Actually, Natalie was talking about that yesterday. And so, yeah. yeah, you have to you have to send her a text or something and tell her yeah. when. And also she baked bread like you bake bread. And then they use sheep's milk and, you know, meat is generally pigeons like we just got to learn so much. So. It was a beautiful reading. They and ate pigeons. Did they people ate eat pigeons, pigeons. still? Well, they, yeah, they were considered poor. No, not today. I doubt it. No, I don't think so. I heard of quail being being served, but not the pigeon. Yeah. Poor little pigeons. They are kind of big and meaty, though. You saw their little pigeon. Yeah. Poor little thing. I know. Listen, I don't eat meat at all, so I find it hard to... No, I do that. eat meat and I find it hard. Anyway, tomorrow is the Holy House of Nazareth, your favorite. Oh, yes. I can't wait. It's getting so good now, guys. It's getting good now. We got through all the Old Testament stuff. Now we're going to go into the... I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. I did too. It was... um Some of it was a little confusing it was. to try to picture, but I guess because, you know, those times are hard to picture. They are. They're hard to picture. So but, next time um, is only four pages. So we'll see. And and then it goes to Mary's Annunciation, with this, which is six pages. So I have a feeling we're going to read two tomorrow. The Annunciation and... Um, well, let's see how it goes. Because when we talk and stuff, it gets really long. Okay. Some, yeah. I think maybe we should concentrate on one a day. I think. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I think because it's not that short. It's not like uh, half a page. It's like uh, two pages. And then the 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 one after those two is twenty pages of these little pages. That's that one's going to be really long. Mary. Okay. Well, and good. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, we did. We had a great uh, a great um, reading today. So I hope you all enjoyed it and our little analysis. And um, we hope you have a beautiful day. And I'm so happy that it fell on St. Joseph's work day after watching that um, movie. You know? Yes. And if you guys have any questions about any of it, um, 
you know, you can look it up on Google or you can just, you know, comment on the bottom. You can comment a little comment to us and we'll read it mm -hmm. and we'll try to the next day um, get to it personally or just answer the comment, you know? Yeah. Well, they really, <laughs> no one's really had any comments, but um, you know, people are watching it and um, yeah. So, yeah. All right. And I mean, even if they're not, you know, we're learning ourselves. So. Oh, no, I think people will either, watch it eventually. Either way, we're good. We just yeah, want to share. We have this, about, is a, this is like evangelizing, girl. Exactly. Well, we have we have views on YouTube and views on Facebook. So we yeah. have quite a few people that, that do watch. Did you... And, um? good for us either way did you put the youtube link on here too do you have it somewhere the link on where to get to the youtube in case they want to see the ones that we've done oh, already i will do that the playlist yeah, okay, yeah because they might want to see what they've missed oh that's a good idea so i'll yeah. add the playlist after each one okay i'll add that Got and it. then you guys can pick and choose like there's you know the ones about mary the you know how 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 ann was um how how that holy thing came into Anne, which was apparently yes molding Mary and everything. It's really cool those those I ones. And there are that, other yeah. readings that are not that great, so you can pick and choose which ones you like. I think that was day twenty five or twenty six. What you're talking about? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye, bye guys. Love bye. you. Have a blessed bye. day. Bye.